Why didn't you do the dishes like I asked? Fifteen years after murdering his sister, Halloween night, 1963, Michael Myers escapes a mental hospital and returns to the small town of Haddonfield, Illinois, to kill again. Halloween stars Donald Pleasance and Jamie Lee Curtis and is written and directed by John Carpenter and co-writer Deborah Hill. Now before we get things rolling, I gotta say something. Yes, I know, this is not the mask from the original Halloween. It's from Halloween Kills, the newest installment in the franchise. Not the greatest film in the franchise, but an amazing performance by James Jude Courtney, and the mask is just sick. I mean, look at it. Deal with it, people. But speaking of the greatest film in the franchise, we are reviewing John Carpenter's Halloween. And Drum Dums, if you're watching, this one's for you, brother. Look, guys, we know how iconic this film is. It didn't just change the slasher genre, but all of horror, period. It sets the bar so very high for all future installments and even entries in other franchises and films as well. Now, it's not the first slasher in history. I mean, we've got Bay of Blood from 1971. We've got Black Christmas from 1974. Deep Red from 1975, although that's more of a giallo film, it still classifies under the slasher genre as well. I could go on and on, but although it's not the first slasher in history, it is the most iconic. I just love how it starts out with Michael's POV and him picking up the mask and seeing out of those two eye holes and then the boyfriend leaves and then he kills his sister. It's really an, an intense scene. The build-up is incredible and it was very well directed and performed. I mean the long shots, the wide-angled shots, the shots in which you see much depth where you have one of the main characters in the foreground and Michael in the background or vice versa. It is just truly remarkable filmmaking. And how can we talk about Halloween without mentioning the score? I mean, John Carpenter is a genius. When you think of iconic horror scores in film, which music do you think of the most? Probably this one. It goes up there with The Exorcist and Psycho. I mean, it's literally one of the most iconic scores in film history. Now, it's interesting that this movie doesn't have a lot of blood in it. Actually, only in a few spots, you've got the kill of Judith, uh, Michael's sister, um, back when he was just six years old in the beginning of the movie, and there's a little blood shown there. There's some blood shown by some rando uh, mechanic dude on the side of the road partway through the film, and then some toward the end of the film when Michael displays his victims, and the dude is swaying back and forth upside down. He's got a little bit of blood on him, but other than that, there's really not much blood in this film at all. But just because there's not much blood in it does not take away from the scares. In fact, it most certainly adds to it. And another thing to mention too is the way that John Carpenter takes a measly 325 some odd thousand dollar budget and just milks every last drop out of it. And that is, in my opinion, a true testament to his genius. And I love the way that he and Deborah Hill wrote Myers' character, or shall I say, the shape. He is really a mysterious character in this one, in the first entry in the franchise. I mean, is he man? Is he supernatural? Is he a mixture of both? That's the beauty of this film, and I believe that this aspect is one of the greatest reasons why this film has resonated with audiences over the past 44 years. It's the little things that did it for me. I mean, you've got musical cues for Michael and when lights are turned on and 
you know, misdirection with some of the characters. You think they're gonna die right away and they don't die till much later. It really is awesome filmmaking. And all of this said, I haven't even gotten to Loomis's character yet. One of the greatest written characters in all of horror. Donald Pleasance really showed up in a massive way. I mean, his monologues and soliloquies, the way he just delivers his dialogue is absolutely fantastic. He made this film. And I love Jamie Lee Curtis. She's the original scream queen and one of the first final girls of all time. And she did amazing. I think she was in a couple TV episodes when she was a little bit younger. Um, a little bit before this, but I believe this was her first film ever. And this really put her on the map, not just for horror, but for other genres as well. And of course, Laurie Strode's character makes some dumb rookie no-no slasher movie mistakes. But this was made before all the 80s horror cheese. And I just think it adds to the film. Hiding in closets and... And, and doing things that are kind of silly. You know that saying that says, you can run, but you can't hide? Yeah, that kind of comes into play here. But Jamie Lee Curtis was awesome. I, I really love the scene when she's at school and she looks out the window and sees Michael staring back at her. And then she kind of tries to figure out what's going on. And just to verify again, she looks out the window and sees him for a second time. See, it's not till the third time that he disappears with the car. It's, you know, something that is kind of one of those misdirections that I was talking about. You would expect him to be there and not be there, but it's just those small little decisions that I mentioned earlier that really made this film click for me. And the side characters of Annie and Linda were really well written. Uh, they're likable. Even Tommy and Lindsay were enjoyable. It's all great stuff. Now let's all take a moment of silence for Lester, the fallen German Shepherd. Okay, I gotta get something off my chest. So if Michael was admitted to the nut house, or should I say Smith's Grove Warren County Sanitarium, when he was six years old, and he gets out when he's 21, so that's 15 years, how was he able to escape by carjacking? I mean, did he learn to drive during those 15 years? I mean, a decade and a half is a long time to figure stuff out, but did he watch movies on it inside the hospital? Did he just figure it out on the fly? I don't know, but it just didn't sit right with me. But I still don't care. It doesn't bother me one bit and doesn't take away anything from my rating. One thing that I thought was really cool was that scene with Lori and Tommy and when they're watching the original The Thing from 1951 called The Thing from Another World. Well, it was just about four months shy of four years later that Carpenter would remake The Thing in 1982. And those two films combined are arguably Carpenter's two most successful and beloved films that he has ever directed. Some would even say the two greatest horror films of all time. Great touch of serendipity there. Beautiful, beautiful. Okay guys, let me know what you think about John Carpenter's Halloween in the comments down below. Do you think it's one of the greatest horror films of all time like many do? Or are you one of those select few that think it's highly overrated or even just a tad bit overrated? Make sure you smash that like button, click the notifications bell so you won't miss any of these reviews. I'm gonna continue on with the Halloween franchise leading up to Halloween ends in October, and then I'm gonna rank all of them together. Also, I'll be continuing my Creepy Files episodes. If you like the last one at all, you're going to love the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. This one definitely is a long time coming. Like I said before, this video is dedicated to Drum Dums, one of the greatest horror movie reviewers on YouTube. And he's a fellow brother in arms, retired Air Force, whoa. So I really appreciate you, man. I'm gonna leave a link in the description below. So if you guys haven't visited Lee's channel on Drum Dums, which I'm sure you have, but if you haven't, make sure you go down in the description below, click on it, 
watch his videos, subscribe, click that notification bell, show him all the love you possibly can. He's one of the greatest guys in the horror community. And I thank you so very much, Lee. You have inspired me to start my own channel and I appreciate you so much, brother. All right, guys, that's gonna do it for me. A.T. Smith here and I am the highest music.